everyone. This is Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Butt. And behind me, you see this fabulous hairdo goes with a face. Uh, we're going to be doing a loose watercolor portrait today, this gorgeous one. Um, I taught her at the retreat, and I'm going to be teaching her to you today. If you check the description below, you'll see the materials that I use. Um, on Everything listed down there is what I'm using for the year. So uh, once you get those set up, you can do any of the classes with me very easily. You don't have to have the exact stuff that I have. Though I do have some specific recommendations where it would make a big difference. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring these free video art classes to you live. He's done so for many, many years now. And he does that by making sure the camera's pointing at what I'm talking about and that you can see what's going on. Because if I can explain it and demo it, you can probably duplicate it at home. And so really how this works is I paint a thing and you paint a thing, I paint a thing, you paint a thing. And because it's a live show, you might have a question about what's going on and you might get that question answered in the live. We are streaming uh, from Facebook and YouTube. So you just watch from your favorite platform. You can watch the video after the show for free. No extra costs. There's no hidden fees. There's no anything. <laughs> So it's just a show up and bring your stuff and paint along kind of class. Oh, here we go. Now, maybe you're a person who does not love to draw. That's not uncommon. Not everybody likes every part of art and not every art skill is required to be an artist. So if you're either not really prepared to draw today or just don't like it as a skill, which is super okay, on the uh, video, if you go to the um on traceables, you will see that this traceable is available for you to download and you can transfer it on the paper. I have pre-sketched it in a little bit. And as I'm talking about the materials and everything, you can be working about getting your image on the canvas however you like to, free-handed or using the traceable. It's fine either way. Over here, you see this on a nice sheet of paper, but this is important information. I'm using something called watercolor paper. I'm using it in a weight 140 pounds. So I do think it's important to use watercolor paper 140 pounds. That comes in cold press and hot press. I use cold press. It's just a preference that I have. You can use hot press. Hot press is smooth. Cold press is bumpy. And it's really just about your personality and the kind of experience you like to have painting. Um, the size is 9 by 12. And I do tend to like a block. A block is where all the pages are glued together and there's only a little bit of it that's open for you to remove the sheet. And what that does is that if I'm doing a very wet application or I'm painting very loosely, paper wants to buckle as the wetness is gone through it because it'll, it'll get wet at different densities and then that creates kind of a ripple, which we don't really like as artists. The block helps prevent a lot of that and then as the, canvas, as the paper dries, it restretches it flat so it's easier to frame. Kind of a thing you might not know if you're a brand new to art. This is Artistico by Fabriano. It is a paper that I love. It's the extra white. I'm really into it. It's just, it's just the one that I, there's wonderful papers out there. This is just the one I like. But the part that you remember is block, 140 pound watercolor paper. Get there and you're good. The other thing I'm going to be using today is I'm going to use a number 14 Raphael Soft Aqua. This is imitation squirrel, which I think is better than actual squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> But um, this gives you a very nice belly and toe in the brush. It's really rather nice, gets you a sharp point, holds a lot of paint, works really well, is made for watercolor painting specifically. And so I do recommend finding a round brush. This one is a size 14. I recommend getting a good brush that's for watercolor that is round. Doesn't have to be the brand. Could be other brands. That's okay. But do look for that. Over here, I have the same colors every week, and let's go over them. We'll call them out. Um, I have, I'm covering my Payne's Gray, babe. You can just scoot me over. Payne's Gray, Nickel Azo Yellow, Hansa Yellow Medium, Pyro Red, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Opera Pink, Transparent Pyro Orange, Burnt Umber, Quinacridone Gold, Thalo Green. Now, I don't necessarily use every color, every class. But you can see I tend to get into these colors, like this is burnt umber, and this is nickel azo yellow, this is thalo green, transparent, see some uh, opera, pink there, quinacridone, onsa yellow. I can really tell them by sight. And as I'm in an area, if I know there's a color there that's already out, since you wouldn't just know that by sight, I will tell you what I'm using. So if it's not coming from one of the little pans, and you're not confused, you're not wondering. Doesn't that sound 
pretty, pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy. I love to say that. Pretty mm-hmm. easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, goodness. I'm going to make sure that I am following. I see Heather Campbell and Lynn Jeffries are saying hi. Kimberly saying hi. And just in time for first day of school is over, says Chantel. Oh, congratulations on being out of school. I know that feels really good. So listen, I'm going to say this again in a video on my page, um, on my personal page. But I just have to say this to you. If you wish me a happy birthday yesterday, I want to thank you very much for your kind words. It was very humbling. And if you contributed to the St. Jude fundraiser on my birthday, I want to give you an even bigger, bigger thanks. Um, if you don't know, that is a fabulous way to make the world a better place. The people over at St. Jude's Children's Hospital treat terminal childhood illnesses and make them not terminal. They have beaten some of the worst childhood cancers and illnesses and are always trying to battle new. They never charge a family a dime. And if you have a child that has one of the rare illnesses that they treat, um, you should definitely look at uh, seeing if you can be part of the Children's Hospital because not only will you not have the medical bills, but you'll have the most forward uh, medical treatment that's out there. And as they help your child, they help every child, like, they help every child everywhere by making those medical treatments available to the world around us. So I just think the coolest thing, so if you help me with that, you help a family's life at the worst possible time in their life be a little bit better. And I think that's super cool. I like to do that every year around my birthday. You gotta pay the universe back for the gifts that it gives us. Mm-hmm. Yay! <laughs> I'm really happy about that. I think it's I, awesome. I am. I just, it gets my heart. Mm-hmm. The St. Jude thing always gets my heart. Uh, my mom, did you, I found this out. My mom does all her shopping and she donates to St. Jude through her Amazon shopping. I didn't know that was a thing you could do, but apparently it's a thing you could do. So I'm telling you about that as well. You can go all year. I didn't know. I'm going to sign us up. Um, all right. We have our paper. We have our heart all full of the good feels <laughs> that you need. And we're going to start putting her in. Now, in this particular lesson, we are going to be doing wet into wet. That means that we're working onto wet paper with wet color. We're going to be doing dry brushing, which means the paper underneath is dry. And then we're putting color over in a dry way. We're going to be drawing with our brush, which is kind of like working with a pencil, but with paint on the brush. We're going to be doing blending sometimes after the paint is dry. And we're going to be doing glazing where we layer thin, transparent uh, coats of paint over it. Now, these are all real simple techniques. They sound, if you've never been painting, that might sound complicated, but they're actually pretty straightforward and kind of what they sound like. So when you see it, you'll get it. Um, If you're very brand new to watercolor, it is a wonderful, wonderful medium. It's a little weird when you first do it. And here's the number one thing I want you as a new artist to know and think about. That the white is your paper. My screen is flickering. Oh, the little one? Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, it's okay. okay. I'm not sure what's it looks what's like about I that. like No, no, you're fine. It's, it's just the screen. It, I was looking at it looks like I was like letting no, me no. a candy man. <laughs> it's I'm, giving me like a ghost. I, I, well, I just noticed that earlier. I may have to replace that monitor. So. Okay. No so worries. So the pencil that I used on this is a watercolor, uh, a water-based pencil. They are... Um, The Credit Color Aqua Pencils, um, so it's just like a pencil, a regular pencil, works like a pencil in every way, except in the one way it's different, which is it is activated with water medium. They use a binder that is activatable by uh, water, whereas a regular pencil is not. Either is okay to use. And we've got to start kind of putting in our first layers, then we build up and build up and build up because white is the paper, which means we go from lightest to darkest. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to pull out one of my very favorite colors, which is quinacridone gold. And let's put that uh, somewhere on our palette right there. That looks like a good place. Quinacridone gold. So this is like a burnt sienna, but just a little warmer and very transparent. And I'm going to start to think about coming along the hairline and doing kind of a little sweeping brush stroke back. See how this is? Mm Mm-hmm. The color is pretty thin. You can see that on the paper towel. I haven't loaded a ton of color on it. When I want to have less color, I will dip in water and allow some of the color to kind of wash out of the brush. And then it will lessen the load and not make it so opaque. Sometimes when you're very new to watercolors, if you've come for acrylic as your primary medium or oils, you will think of these in opaque terms. But you got to stop it and think of them in... 
very transparent term. Mm -hmm. Come over and do something similar on the other side. I like to start with this color. It's a great color on this piece. Notice that the brush strokes kind of have a curve or an S stroke. When I want the brush stroke to be lighter, I lessen the pressure on my brush. And when I want it to be thicker, I weight it down some. I'm going to rinse out a bit. I'm going to do uh, an interesting thing. I'm going to come along the jawline. And I'm going to get the jawline just a little bit wet. It's going to soften the pencil a bit, as you can see. And then I'm going to come back with my transparent pyro orange. I mean, quit acrylic gold. And I'm going to come along here. Now, by pre-wetting the line, you will notice that I get a very soft line along the jaw. And it's a very light line. And I want that because if the line is too heavy, and I'm rinsing my brush out, you can see I don't have any pigment. And I'm going to come in and soften this under the jaw and let it sort of blend down. Can you guys see how I'm doing that? So, mm. yes, we have color down. But it's very soft color initially. And the reason is, is that if we have too hard of initial lines going, what can happen is that the figure gets very flat. And um, I'm going to get into some of my nickel also yellow here just real quick. And we found that even at the retreat, some of our guests were feeling that. And so we want to make sure that in this lesson, we pay extra attention to making sure this isn't flat. So I'm coming along and I will take a wet brush and you'll notice soften these colors out, right, along the neck. I haven't lost my neckline, but I am softening that space. And I may come here. This is my nickel ozo yellow and my quinacrone gold. And I may just make sure that we have some soft kind of glowing black back light here in these curling strokes, as you can see. Quite light, all this work. I don't want a hard edge on the chin. So I'm going to come back with a damp brush. See how I'm softening that line? I'm not ready for a hard line yet, so I want to soften this some. And this is a way that you can do that. You can even soften this along the neck here. Making no, like, very distinct edges sometimes will keep a face or figure soft. We are always going to come back and add more structural lines later, but by controlling what we have, it allows us to control that space. Now I'm going to check here. I see Colleen is there, and I see Jackie Mula is saying hi from Oregon. Mm -hmm. And people are greeting each other. And Penny says, happy belated birthday. Oh, Penny donated. Thank you so much. So it's like, uh, again, it's amazing. Like, 100%, I check this before I ever started using any of the Facebook donations. Um, is 100% of your donation does go directly to the charity. They release it twice a month. And I always start, start my making sure we hit the minimum. So that I always goes 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I checked all that out, and they are a good uh, source uh, for getting money to them and protecting also your credit information, apparently. That's what the internet says anyways. I'm not an expert, but it's what the internet says. So um, I have a daughter that is a happy, healthy adult that had leukemia at age five. That is amazing, Penny. That is what they're about. They are about that. Um, I got to tour St. Jude Children's Hospital and hear the story about Danny Thomas and how he started the hospital and what they started to face and why they picked what they picked as their first illness to be, which they have taken it from the most terminal childhood cancer to the most survivable childhood cancer. So research and effort and amazing people with the right kind of help can change the world, I think. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes we put all our energy in the wrong people. <laughs> We got to put our energy in the good people. Back into our quinacridone gold. I'm going to make a light little wash here, which just means notice that this is pretty transparent. And yeah, I have a very fancy porcelain palette. Why do I like porcelain? Plastic palettes, the water can beat up and pool, whereas porcelain, they stay smoothed out, wetted out. And so it can be nicer to work with. It's the only reason why. I want to do this in very light coats, right? I don't want strong colors at all. So I'm just making sure my color is a little bit light. Also remember that in watercolor, I'm coming along the top above the nostrils with kind of like this little shadow, you know, and then 
Maybe bring a little bit back here and a little bit back here. This speaks to the ball of the nose a bit. Uh, along the nasal fold, like you do. And then maybe a little bit down the divot. You know how the nose has a divot. Oh, thank you, Kath and Jarvi and uh, Gomez Amanda. Um, four stars. I really appreciate that. I try to get my thank you notes out, but I don't know that anybody ever sees them, but I do try to do that. <laughs> my mom used to be a big person on handwriting letters. Mm -hmm. I've taken this very light color. Here's the trick, guys. Where you're going to struggle when you're new is keeping the colors light. That's where it's hard. When you're, when you're brand, brand new, just keeping those colors light and... And not letting them get too strong. If you feel like you got too much color, you can always come back with a damp brush and see how I'm working on the paper towel. This is like a type of racing. I can lift the color a bit. Isn't that neat? Mm hmm If you're like, man, this needs some work, don't worry. You're okay. You're okay. You can get there. I like that. That's looking really good. I'm gonna come in and start the eyes with the same. Anacridone gold. Now I'm going to come in here and kind of wet the eye. There's a little pigment on there. And the pencils you can see when I, when I wet the area does soften. And that is impactful. So you might have to come in with your regular HB pencil. And just make sure you've got your good lines where you need them. I'm going to lift any extra pigment out using my paper towel and uh is john john are you catching the paper towel happening I'm not seeing it catch that mm, so what i okay, what i would love that. you guys to catch is Hold how on. i take off this i can paint. do that okay he's chatting <laughs> i can hear him typing away mm -hmm. oh hold on give me just a minute i'll fix that because what i gotta do is yeah we want to be able to see on these on the palette we don't want to see what's between the palette in the painting, there but sometimes on the watercolor. So that's what I'm doing is I'm using the paper towel to pull extra moisture out, and then I come in with the brush, and that what's that's what gives me a soft erase look. That better? Yes. Okay. That's what's happening there. I'm gonna get kind of a similar thing going here, right? And if I feel mm. like I've got more than I want there, I just wipe off, and as you can see, I can erase. That's the other reason why a good paper. <laughs> Here. That's the other reason why good paper is impactful because it allows me to lift and pull color. And papers will tell you a lot of times if they have a very good lifting personality or if you're going to be working extra hard. I'm going to take some quinacridone gold okay. and just softly work that into the lid a bit. Now, at the end of all this, hmm. when you're all done, yes, Amy would like you to hear you, hear you talk about your birthday a little bit. Oh, so when you're done. When I'm done when, with the whole done, painting. Yeah, when you're done with the painting. Oh, the whole painting. All right. Have a little birthday talk again. Thank you. Stay to the end. Thank and you, I will Elaine. tell you the story of my birthday. And thank you to Elaine for the support out on YouTube. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. We had, we had Super Chat. Uh, yes, we did. Elaine, ding, ding, ding. You might be our first Super Chat on the Watercolor Channel. And it was a very generous super chat. So thank well, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kick it off. Kick it off with the good vibes. It was a champagne bottle on the. Oh, wow. I don't even know. I've never seen the champagne bottle. No, no. I mean, that's just the metaphoric, you know, we're launching the ship. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I haven't seen that sticker. I'm getting some quinacridone gold. And you can see I'm, I'm, it's a light wash. It's not heavy. I'm not loading this heavy. Um. And I'm going to come in and this is sort of what I'm about to do here is actually sort of true for eyebrows too as well is you start with this first kind of light toning of color, you know, and yes, I might come at the edge and see how I'm flicking very gently with my brush. Flick, 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 flick. It's just a little flick. Just kind of making sure that my eyebrows are shaped well. Bringing that along there kind of beginning that shape. Now, I like to think of my eyebrows coming from the inside edge of the eye to the outside. So whether you're doing a fantasy size of eye or a realistic size of eye, 
I sometimes keep those things together, though my daughter likes to do mini little tiny eyebrows right there. Uh, Cheryl Curtis says, is this one watercolor? It is, but Cheryl, you can take acrylic paint and water it down and use it like this in a very similar way on watercolor paper. Where it will be a little different is it can layer opaquely and you can build up and go into water, uh, te acrylic techniques later on, and it doesn't necessarily lift as easily as watercolor. And once it's dry, it's really on there. Oh, thank you. I want to say thank you to Coney Houston. That is very generous. Let's see if I can get the picture in picture now for Joy. I was having trouble earlier because it was a really big Yeah, pile. I tried to make sure that I put this on the page here in the event and also in group uh, so you guys could see it. I'm going to get a little of my nickel ozo yellow and some quinacridone gold. Come along her little jawline here, and I'm going to draw with a brush. It's a very light little line. Anywhere I feel like the line was kind of like needs to be soft, and I can always come in, interestingly enough, and look at the soften one edge of it. Isn't that interesting? It's mm -hmm. a little different than um, acrylic in that way. You can come in and soften that edge. We have some cool landscape paintings coming up where we're going to be working from photographs. Watercolor from photographs. That's a mind trip because they're so different. All right, I'm going to get a little more of my nickel ozo and my quinacridone gold. You could use burnt umber. You can use any brown that you have. You're just trying to create this kind of like golden color, warm like summer. I'm going to just kind of bring that along the lid there. Bring that there as well. Come back into our nose. Outer by nasal fold, stronger line. Inner nostrils, stronger line. I might even come right here and start the little pocket on the chin spine. You know what I mean? Pocket on the chin spine. Yes, I'll be coming back later with pink and, and color, but I want to kind of create that little divot. What I'm doing here is I'm using my brush to soften the pigment and just make sure that there's a there's a little color, but I don't want it to get overly hard and where I need to soften it out, I can come to the outside edge, as you see here. And look at that. Soften it right out. You can put it down and lift it up. I'm going to kind of come in a little bit on the cheeks with a bit of a wet, and we're going to do a little bit of wet into wet. I'm going to take some of my quinacridone just so softly and just start to pull it over a bit on the cheek. I need to soften here as we come down, I will. And then I might get a little ultramarine into this. It kind of takes it more of a violet. When you take ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta, uh, much like um, in uh, acrylic, makes a nice purple. I'm going to blend this around here. Just want to make sure it's a little bit light around the eye. And remember, this will absolutely, I'm going to pull some of that purple. I'm going to put the lashes over. That'll be nice. And if I've got to soften this line here, I'll just soften the line. Is that what we do? <laughs> Softening that line. You're okay. You can do that. I'm going to grab a little of my green. I think I'm going to come along the neck here and add a little bit of green. I'm going to be playful with a color in a couple of places. See how we're doing? Mm-hmm. Maybe put some green here. 
A little touch on the lid there as well. Fun to play. And while all this is having a thing, let's talk a bit more about the hair. I want to get a good amount of the hair done before I start working the floral because it's behind. I'm kind of coming around. I'm going to get back into maybe this time my burnt umber. Put acridone gold on a little nickel, nickel ozo yellow. And start to loosely wash some hair. Let's get the purple going. What? I know. So unexpected. Play that in there. We're being playful with the hair. And that's okay to do. Grab a little of my phthalo glue. A little bit of touches there. Adding some color. Get a little phthalo blue. Just a little. Come over and touch up the inside of this eye a bit with some blue. I'm going to bring that up over. And come up over a little bit with some in the shading inside eye as well. There we caught a little shadow in there. Nice thing to do. Maybe a little under my eye. Back into the burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. Colleen says this is one of her favorite watercolors, and I see Patty Estraline. I believe I saw some gorgeous pictures of Patty in a beautiful location. And I remember I was just thinking that is so wonderful to see you there being happy. It's so nice to see everybody out here hanging out. I don't, I don't stalk y'all on Facebook. I just noticed that. Hmm. I don't have a screen anymore. Did your little screen died? Yes, it did. It died. Mm. It just, I wonder what happened with that screen. I don't know. It had a little moment it and then it said no more. It gave up its its it LCD its, ghost. Its it did. Said, no, and the little the the smoke genie left, and it won't come it back. Did a bit. I'm gonna get some work on acridone gold and kind of maybe work some of these colors. That's a little bit heavier. See how this color is heavier? So you can come in and this is wet into wet. I'm kind of glazing over, and it's okay to do little light lines for short hairs and. Let things dry. Oh, we got a little need to pluck over there a bit. I'm going to take a heavier version of that quinacridone gold. Trying to make sure that I've got some nice little hair bits. Quinacridone gold. So it's pretty pretty well loaded onto my brush. And bring these little curls around. If you want to practice these brush strokes because they're giving you any trouble, you can do that. You don't have to find out the first time if a brush stroke is hard for you on the paper, on the project that you're working on. You can take your brush and practice on another piece of paper and just make sure that the techniques you're going to get are the ones that you're wanting. I'm trying to keep my brush pressure light. And I also like to use one brush sometimes. It helps you guys remember that, you know, art is in you, not necessarily always the paint or the tools. There we go. I like that. That's pretty. That's fairly playful today. Put some purple in today. Just playful. I want to come up in here and um, play with the eyes a bit. So let's get into that purple, which is our quinacridone and our ultramarine blue. Do you see me mixing that there? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could use purple out of your 
your watercolor set. That would be all right. Nobody would be mad at that. Let me come right here and try to kind of get to the purple. I might get a little more ultramarine blue on here. Let's get a little nickel Aussie yellow. Come up over the top, just be playful. I might even grab some opera pink. See what a little pop of ink or pop or pink might do. If I want to soften this, I can with my damp brush. <laughs> and if I get a little too heavy with the yellow, it's okay. I'll just blend it back. And we're getting there. Now, don't worry under your lid line because we really haven't done the lashes and the lashes come in a minute and those will find their shape. Um, if it's just a little bit bumpy like that, it's going to smooth out completely. Let's begin our pink. And I'm going to go right into my opera pink because I just, I feel like for this, I want to start out with some opera pink. Come along the lip line. Just a little bit. And what I want to do is soften in here. So I'm going to take my brush and a little damp water. And then maybe grab my quinacridone. Come under that lip. Pull color away from where I feel like it wouldn't belong. My lip got a little crazy in that shape for a second. Needs to find its shape again. The pencil got a little heavy on it. Mm. Sometimes for the pencil to show for you guys, it gets a little heavy for the people. That's okay. We're going to. Keep working the lip until we get there and we're happy with the final result. And we will. Maybe bring it across a little more, even across the top. Less of a good angle. All right, I'm going to tip this up so I can make sure that I'm, sometimes when you work flat, it's super easy to get off uh, even. I'm going to put my white back with some acrylic paint because I really lost it. I'm lifting back here. You see where I'm lifting? Mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of making sure that we've got an even line that I can work with. I'm just lifting up some of the pencil that I felt was overly heavy. I'll come even in from the edge and pull it back in where I know I want to and this is, again, why good paper is a big deal. This moment here. That's crazy. Being able to do that and say, hey, I feel like this line got off the direction I would like. And so now I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I'm going to soften it out. It doesn't have any hard lines. And I'm going to let it dry, and then I'm going to come back and shape that in a lot better. And I've got lots to do, so while this is having a moment, 
let's talk a little bit about all the wonderful greenery and flowers and everything around her face. Um, if we want the colors to be bright or pink or bright yellow or bright orange or bright anything, um, you're going to want to put those bright colors in before you get the greens in because the greens will be um, creating a hidden primary in most of the colors and take them into a more muted tone, uh, which isn't bad, not terrible, but it's just if you want a few pieces that are, say, more vibrant. So I'm going to start with my Nickel Ozzo Yellow, quite vibrant. I'm going to come here. I'm going to make a little kind of upward stroke. Another little upward stroke. And I'm going to fan this out. This is like a trumpet flower. In this type of floral painting, you're going to paint the shape of the flower, like the petals, but not the individual. I'm going to make a little random shape here. And a little random shape here. A little random shape here. I'm going to do that because I'd like the yellow to be dispersed around her crown maybe a little bit more than in the original. I think it's going to improve it a great deal. Let's pop some other little yellow flowers. And you can layer even though it's transparent. It'll just give you a nice little edge on what's there. Well, those are having a dry. I'm going to get some of my opera pink because I just love it and I think it pops. And I'm going to come in and make a round kind of star flower. See how I make these irregular little shapes? Mm -hmm. You get this. This is something I think, if you can, if you're willing to give the time, is worth practicing where you just paint little individual flowers in your watercolors loosely so that you get a sense of how they take up space. So when you really look at the contour shape of a flower, um, sometimes we tend to want to paint each petal. But what we really should be painting is each shape and the fact that some of them maybe are hidden, right, and layering. So we can layer into the yellow a couple places, mm -hmm. which I think is always fun. Let's get some purple involved, which is our quinacridone and our ultramarine, and they make a beautiful purple. And I'm going to make sort of a wet little diffused area purple. I mean, we know there's flowers there. Bring some down here. It'd be pretty. We know they're there. And it's okay if every once in a while our flowers touch hmm. and kind of bloom into each other a bit. We will like it. We will be glad for it. Doesn't mean I won't on occasion take the brush and talk about petals almost more specifically. If I want the purple to be deeper, I'll add more ultramarine blue. See how that does? Mm -hmm. Take it more into the violet. And if I want it to be lighter, I'll go more into the quinacridone. I will take some of these dark purples into the loose purple that I've already painted, and you can see that that diffuses how we get that loose floral look. Sometimes, uh, and once you get used to creating these, it like the first time you try this, yeah, it might be a little bit challenging because you've just never used that part of your creative space before. But as you practice these flowers, mm -hmm. they will get easier and easier and easier. And I should probably do like even more like loose florals because mm. I love doing them in the watercolor. I love doing uh, fun to watch. pieces, but I also love doing the worst floral. Hmm? They're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. Put some magenta in here. That's where I took it more into the magenta. See how it's going? Mm -hmm. I think she's going to be more floral today. More floral than ever before. I just put some purple centers in those yellows. Did you guys see that go down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just went down. It's okay if I want to add some of these colors to her hair. I think that that's fine. 
L.A. was wondering, I wonder if the Sherpa would decorate her hair like this. I would. She has. I would. It would happen. I would be completely fine with that. I'm going to get some transparent power warning. Almost every fall for the first 10 years of our marriage, she would do this and we would go to the Renaissance Festival. I may have made this headdress by hand. <laughs> That's a true. billion times. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I had my baby girl... Uh, she got them. Her up as that, uh, like the kids and my son and and Elena Bella. I don't know if we ever got to do that with. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we have pictures of her too. Yeah, but yeah. My youngest is much. still is still very much into a fairy, but now my youngest is a clown fairy. The oldest. <laughs> the oldest one. The oldest is the clown fairy. My youngest is just regular. No, she's not regular. She's the she's, she's the, the lemon lime fairy. She's the in charge fairy. She's the in charge fairy's right. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little nickel also. And, uh, and uh, my son was like, I'm gonna be steampunk fairy. I don't know. I just want my kids to be happy, so I kind of go with wherever they're at in their life. Whatever you got going, going, that's fine. Yeah, I'm good with it. I'm keeping up. I'm learning. It's new days for me. So I'm taking the nickel also and a little bit of my. They look green and making kind of a bright green through here. And I'm filling in. Can you guys see how that's filling in? Mm -hmm. I think it's important to have some light greens in there. Yeah, it's easy to come in with some dark greens or some blue greens. But I think you will find that a little bit of, I might even, even imply some has come down here a bit. We can always layer a darker green into it. We can always go darker a little challenging like you saw the lips it's hard to go lighter mm -hmm. and that's that's important to to be thinking about and go get a little more green whenever i want it See here we can kind of pull and filter in some of the uh other grains and you know some of my color has dried so they're not all just blending into each other I'm sort of working this pretty quickly because I do want some moments where maybe the color blends in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go more into my phthalo green. You know, I might even put a little of my, my phthalo blue into it, right? Get, a, get it into that kind of, ooh, look at that. So pretty. Now I'm kind of touching and pulling. See how the tip of the brush stroke pulls back? Mm -hmm. I'm not just filling in. I'm also kind of implying maybe shape you know these little pops but where it goes into a wet it just blends doesn't it mm -hmm. that's so fun and i love that part because every time it's just a, a little different tapping up and down is okay to do filling in some space also nice to do I'm just pulling that around here. And it's nice when it blends into something else. And it's also nice when they sit next to each other on the page. It's just nice no matter how you do it. Different every time. Nice no matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Carolyn Blaine's husband just told her it's okay to blink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. It is okay to blink. <laughs> it's all right. So I'm going to get into my phthalo blue and green. I might even get a little of my nickel oz there. I'm going to kind of make a, almost like an aqua color. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lightly going to come into the top. See how light this color is? Let's fill this out. Let's make this a big sort of flower space. We can always come back with a little more pink, but we just want some kind of soft light little flower space to enjoy. You can take it to the edge if you want, or you can keep it kind of centralized as a crown. It's fine no matter how you choose to do.
don't want to take all my yellow away, so I'm trying to be a little precious around it. Because it's so bright. If I want it to be just blue, I can kind of come up here and be like, oh, you're a little more blue. Hmm. See how that is? No, there's no stopping it. You can always go back and be like, oh, hey, do you mind if I put a little purple or a little bit there? And Sephora will allow you to play for sure. If you're not stuck, you can always add a, a little extra layer. You just can. More into my green. You can come back with little pops of bright green over areas. Allow everything to sort of soften in and go play. Hmm. Now, a couple places I might put some focus. I'm going to take my quinacridone gold. And let's just. Maybe give some details to a flower to show that it's got something going on, right? Yeah. A little center. We put a couple centers in. I am not this time going to put a dark center in there because I think the light center is so engaging. I might grab some of my little yellow and pull some little yellow dabs also coming down. Let them fall more. Let them fall more. Now, that can have a little rest for a second and think about what it's done. And we're going to come in and let's work on our lashes. I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my quinacridone gold on the tip of this brush. I'm going to make sure there's no hidden drops or anything that's going to drop on my page. Come under the eye and set the line. That's going to be everything below that line is going to be lashes. See how that's set? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lashes to the front will be shorter, and then as they come out, they're going to get longer and kind of curl. This can be a little bit hard if you've never done it before. Even if it's hard today, know that you can do it. It just might take you a little bit of time to decide, you know, how to practice it. Mm -hmm. And it's a practice thing. My brush strokes have curves. So my lashes tend to curl from the inside going out. Um, you know, the lid is closed, so that's very nice. Though we did have a couple people at the retreat do it open because they were like, I just, they're open eyes to me. I can't do them closed. And I get that. That's okay. You know, I'm going to come here and, again, shorter the front. And then as they come in longer, and then kind of curl that. To the side a bit. That is lash layer one. Not bad. I have more lash layers to do, but while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to go get into my... Uh, opera pink and get a little, little of my quinacridone get into it. And I'm going to really look at my lip here. Give me just a second to make sure I set this correctly. Create that little bit of shadow. Under the top lip. A little bit rounded out this time. Mm -hmm. A little bit more rounded out this time. Want to make sure we have space to leave a um, 
going to highlight on the lip and we can come back with um, acrylic paint and highlight so we're not really stuck. Just taking the opera pink and a little micronacridone. Bring some little dark shadow up to the top lid. Starting to put that center in. Now I'm going to lift out the center of the ball of the lip because mm -hmm. it will be lighter. A little bit darker down the center there. Definitely a little shadow under. Try to get the shadow. Curl some little shadow lines up. Just trying to get you some shape going hmm. on these round lips. Little bit, uh, maybe a little more into almost like a purple. The shadow there. Oh, there. A little shadow. I'm going to get a little of my Payne's Gray mm -hmm. and my Burnt Umber. And while this is all having a moment, it needs to soften out. I come in and give myself some nostrils right there. Come along the top of my lid if it's dry. Even come and add just a few detailing hairs. I've got to be light with it, but a little umber, little little Payne's gray mm -hmm. makes a very dark brown. Gonna pull some lashes along here. Our lashes have a couple of values to them, I think. Mm -hmm. Get a little of my purple going. Come up over the little bit. Cut too. I think I'm gonna take some of my pink and exaggerate above the eye. And soften it. The damp brush, not fun. I 
an exaggerated little cheekbone here. Oh, those are some cheekbones. Yeah, I got a little crazy with cheekbones, but it happens. <laughs> she went, 80s blush. She did go a little 80s blush on me in a second. That's okay. It happens. She was the kinder, gentler side of Blade Runner. <laughs> a little purple. little sep separation under the lip and I can always come and get a little shadow under even here under her chin little deep purple which is again the quinacridone and the ultramarine blue So we had some new folks in here who were like, I don't know where your website is and I'm afraid to close the window. Where do I go? <laughs> Thearchsherpa.com. In fact, if you just search the Art Sherpa in general, you're going to find way too much of me. You will find more. Thousands of acrylic lessons. Our website, uh, brushes, <laughs> stuff on Michael. You, stuff we all done, over the world. We've done some stuff. Our Instagram and Pinterest and lessons on all the platforms and Pretty much almost everything we do is completely free. We don't have a patronage, but we the patrons really what they're trying to help us do is make sure we can give as much art for free as possible. They're sort of there as, a, as an act of love. They are the wind beneath our wings. They are the wind beneath our wings. They really are. And, they, do, they make um, it all possible. They do. I couldn't do it without them. Like We've really increased the number of watercolor classes that we're offering now. That's as thanks to patrons. Patrons it help is. that out. I'm going to kind of I think, move the neck a little bit in its positioning. Give her a more kind of thought out and consider neck. Now, a couple things that we can do. We can take white paint or gouache if, you know, I lost some of the reflections without using frisket. Sometimes if you're working in there and working in there, it's hard to keep really pristine white paint. Um, in the upcoming, we've got a bunch of upcoming classes which will use frisket to hold that uh, liquid masking agent. Ultimate frisket is my personal favorite by graphic. Um, but you can do a lot. Like I can come in if I feel like, oh, I want a little more light on the inside of that eye. You know, I can get that. And just sort of tap and fade that in. And the acrylic, uh, I don't really do watercolor uh, over acrylic, but it's okay to do acrylic over watercolor. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a whole class to retreat on that one last. Um, it's just that the watercolor paper is thirsty, mm -hmm. and it kind of absorbs your acrylic. You can see if I wanted to lighten the inside corner of that, I totally could. Also, if I wanted to detail out a couple, which I do. I'm going to detail out some lip reflections, which if you can see this, I don't want to drop on my brush. I'm using white acrylic, and I'm just kind of making these uneven. If you've done a few lips with me, you're familiar with the deal. These ziggity-zaggity mm -hmm. little dashes. These are the little high points of the pillow of the lip that are a little wrinkly. And by giving them a reflection, we really just pull those lips out, don't we? Yeah.
I'm going to give that pillow a little bit of, of love and there they go. Now the lips make me happy. That works out very, very well. I can take this little tiny brush and get some pink on it. Come here and make a little signature. Okie dokie. There you go. We have a little watercolor class on a watercolor portrait. I would love to see yours. Come by uh, the Art Sherpa official group um, and share your uh, watercolors for my tutorials anytime. Whoa there, Sherpa. Oh, that's right. I can't say goodbye. I told you I'd tell you about my birthday. Erd! I, d I don't have any. I have a black screen, so I don't know. You have black screen. Let me go over. I'll see how I'll do tech support while you're doing that. Okay. So my birthday. First of all, I took my birthday off. I tend to work a lot. As if you guys have been with me for a minute, if you're brand new here, you don't know how much I work. But if you're not, if you've been here a minute, you're like, this girl is always teaching a free art class. <laughs> so and I've been doing it for about seven years online now. So um, I took off my birthday. And um, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't work. I didn't paint. I didn't record a video. I didn't anything. We got up and everyone's like, you know, you can do whatever you want with your day. What do you, this is a, this is a birthday gift. They're like, what do you want to do with your day? And I was like, oh, well, let's get out. Let's run around and, and see the local Pennsylvania area. So we thought it'd be fun to go antiquing. And I found a bunch of crazy, amazing antique shops. And then we were like, and we're going to find a restaurant. So we go to the first antique shop, which is a place called On and On, which is an antique mall. And it's amazing. And everybody there is super lovely. And I found um, a mid-century modern ashtray with two uh, horses and ceramic on it. I don't use it for smoking, but I like to use them as uh, collection, like knickknacks like, knick trays. And it's just, I love mid-century modern ashtrays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they're just an art form. All <laughs> the swirliness. All the swirl. It is. It's the swirliness and the organic forms and flow. And uh, my eldest was collecting every clown thing she could. And my youngest was like all the little animals that look like people. And my son was like vintage electronics. So we were all having a good time. My mother-in-law was there. And she was sort of having some fun too, uh -huh. I think. She likes the antique. She's kind of like an antique pro. Like She does the chalk paint and all that. So she's familiar with like getting in like an old piece of furniture. This was fairly picked though. If, you know what I mean? Like where they have curated. This is a, like they have pulled these beautiful gems from the junk pile and shared them with us. So it's a very nice uh, experience. Um, but, you know, they, they tend to know what their antiques are worth. So it's not necessarily like steel, but if you're looking for a find, it was great. And um, so we did that for forever. Oh, and there was a mural of Dwight outside. Oh, yeah. And, and, and there was so much like the office in there. And I loved the office. Like, I cried when the office ended. I like went into mourning. I miss Michael Scott so much. I miss Michael Scott Scott so much. I'm watching the morning show and trying not to be mad at him for the role he's playing because he's playing a bad guy. Right? That's how much I miss Michael Scott. The actor probably has a real name, mm. but I don't know him. And I don't know Dwight's real name. I just know them as their characters, really seriously. In Quiet Place, Jim was just being chased by monsters. That's how deep into the show I am. I'm like, I don't know why you're with Jim, but Jim should get away. Um, so this all makes sense if you watch The Office. Giant mural of Dwight. Got a bunch of pictures of the kid with that. And did the whole, like, it's my mother's birthday and you should take a picture for me because I want pictures of you. That's what I like from the kids for my birthday. Pictures of the kid. So then we're like, let's go find a place to eat. And let's make it an adventure. And we just put food in the, in the Google Maps and it was showing up places, but places were closed. One place was like, it said open, but it was both too bougie and closed. <laughs> It was just like too much. And the whole time, my mother in law is in the back of the car going, There's a place that's a seafood restaurant with a boat. I'm like, God, I don't, I don't know. We're in Pennsylvania. Do I want to eat seafood here? Like, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't know what the seafood is like. How fresh is the sushi? I don't know. And mm -hmm. we've been in quarantine, so I don't know. This is like the first real outing I've had. And um, so we're like, All right, let's do the boat. Let me tell you what. She. Do you remember won, the name? No, do you? Uh, Cooper's. Cooper's? Cooper's boat. Okay. If you are going through Pennsylvania and you see you are near Cooper's, which is in Scranton, you've got to go. It is amazing. It is the kitschiest, 
craziest, themiest. Oh my gosh. It was the best place to have a birthday, uh, dinner, lunch, whatever we were eating that you could have. Uh, it did have seafood. It had all kinds of other things. There was a giant pretzel that my son ate twice. I have to say, I wonder how many people have to show up to say the Art Sherpa sent us before it's a thing. You should go. You should go. You should go. Like, besides paraphernalia from every show you've ever liked. Adult fact, beverages. Huh? Themed adult beverages. Themed adult beverages. With themed. souvenirs. With souvenirs. And um, dioramas. Meals, dioramas everywhere. Dioramas everywhere. Train up on the ceiling, trucking through. Little trams going up and down. The, the place has got seating for days. It's got characters that talk to you. It's got a giant octopus on the roof. There is an alien from the movie Aliens that comes down um, out of the ceiling by all the Barbies near the women's bathroom in the back. I would say this is on par with any Orlando level experience restaurant. Yeah, I had such a blast. I have to tell you, I had such a blast. It's just in the middle of the city, like. And I got uh, I got a mule, but I got a, a, a elderberry and pear mule, which like I, I love mules. I like Pim's cup and mules. And I like anything that's like if I'm drink if it if it tastes like I'm drinking a sweet garden, it is the best. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> like lavender and elderberry and any of that, I'm like ah, drink it. So yeah. I drank that, and that was amazing. My kids were thrilled with their food. I got it was tons of cute video of them. Cooper's Seafood House. Cooper's Seafood House. It's a boat, but I mean, it was well, so it's funny. More than a boat. We had it has, to, like, there's a whale in it. There was a whale in it. I mean, a, I mean, a whale of a whale. I mean, not and like a little like whale. There was like old timey like diving, and then also there was like every Gungam ever from Transformers. Okay, in so the wait, United stop. States Just, and- there were no Gun- Gundam units in what were in they? Transformers. They were Transformers. Oh, they were sorry. Series I'm, one I apologize to everybody okay. everywhere. Transformers. My son <laughs> freaked out. He, I like had to pull him away from the glass. I'm like, people touch that. You can't. Now we have to wash you in your face and your hands. Um. So it was great. It was great. And we ate there and my mother-in-law found it and I owe her everything she's giving me like. Okay. So then, so then we're like, let's go. There is this place, um, Good Old Things, which has exterior um, architectural elements like doors and wrought iron and statuary. But there was also a place called Analog. Analog said it was open. Analog Culture said it was open, but it was not open. Never I have open. to say, shame on you, because if you're going to be open, be open. If you're not going to be open, be open. Don't do the I'm going to return in five hours thing. <sighs> but so we weren't there. But then we went to Good Old Things, which was amazing. I love Good Old Things. It's miles and miles and miles this was of all old wrought iron fens and staircases and bathtubs with feet. And, you know, it's like, it's like they just, just, just all of the stadium seating and oh, I, there were these of- giant, massive cement statuary heads that I just want to put all over my yard. I, I, they're a thousand pounds a piece. <laughs> I don't even know how much they are. They're a thousand pounds a piece, which was the stopping point for me because the skid loader isn't working. And so I don't know how to get them to the location on the property that I want. And a thousand I, pound heads cannot be moved without my skid loader having its new hydraulic valve replaced. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's not happening. But <laughs> if the skid loader gets fixed and the heads are still there and they're in budget, yeah, I'm going to go back. And, and then if you're driving through and you see a bunch of cement heads, you might be like, is that near a surface house? Because there's cement heads everywhere with like bearded irises around them. That'll be me. And um, so we love that. And then we went to, what was the other? Oh, we went to another adorable, amazing uh, mall and met a couple who had been in the Gulf Coast and, and had uh, survived like some hurricanes that we survived. But now they were in Pennsylvania, but they originally started in Pennsylvania. And we found a bunch more stuff. Mm. And there was a good bow maker there. So about all the bows that I could for the kids. Um, and found a couple more pieces, really weird kitty pieces for me for the house. Um, I can't really get anything yet because <laughs> I don't know how quickly you move, but it takes me a minute to unpack from a move. I can get from one location to another, but I can't get out of the boxes. <laughs> and I can't figure out what I'm doing with any of the space. I have to be there for a second. But I found a lot of stuff that I liked, and I definitely will be going back, and I think I found something. Uh, this, the places were amazing, and it was incredible, and then we went back to the first place we went to to get the antique uh, electronics for my son, who finally decided that, yes, he did want the old disc man or walk man or whatever it was. So then we were super exhausted, and we came home, and here was the universe gave me this present. It gave me uh, the Tomorrow War a day early. I thought it was releasing today, but it released yesterday, and I made my family watch it. 
And I said, there was no telling me my son was going crazy, he had so many issues because he video games a lot. So he did not feel that their attack plan for the bad guys was a good attack plan. He kept making me pause the movie to explain about robots and drones and why you would never fight this like on the ground. He was just so funny. He had many, many tactical. And he's such a lovely child who does not like violence, but he definitely feels if you're going to engage in it, you have to be smarter. And then John was forbidden uh, because it was my birthday for pointing out every plot hole. And I don't care because Chris Pat was lovely and I liked him in Guardians of the Galaxy and I was going to watch him in that. And um, sure, it was Mrs. Waterford and it took me a minute to get around that because I'm deep into The Handmaid's Tale and I'm gonna, it's going to be hard for me to see that actress and not want to go, hey! but I'm like, this is a working artist and this is another role and well, I cannot necessarily give that to the people in the office. I can get that. I can give that to this actress because, you know, I'm a grown person and I can see things in realistic terms. Oh, and Loki was good. So that was my birthday. <laughs> and it was really, oh, 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 and even bigger than that, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, every year for my birthday, I put up a post where I say what I'm grateful for because I think if you're here for another year, this is just me. You don't have to do this. But I, I want to thank my parents and thank the people in my life the people that made the previous year amazing and all the stuff that I'm grateful for and put my goals of intentions of how I want to work for the universe and work. I volunteer. I'm a volunteer. I volunteer to the universe all the time. I, I reach up to my high power and say, like, if you need help, like, let me know and I'll show up. And um, so I do that. And then I also give to St. Jude. And, and then I, I don't ever try to do a hard invite because I know you guys don't want a bunch of, like, fundraisers in your Facebook feed. So I do, like, a soft one. And explain kind of what St. Jude is. And you guys came in and raised so much money for St. Jude. There's so many plasma treatments. It's got to be amazing for them. And um, and a couple parents wrote me and said that they didn't know about the hospital and that their child might qualify for that program mm -hmm. and that they were going to be checking that out. And I know that's going to be like, it, I, I would never want to go through any of the reasons um, that you would have to be at St. Jude for. But if I had to be going through that, they are the team that I would want with me and helping me because I, I, it just is the right energy in the right space, with the right people who give from their heart a thousand percent of the time. And I just love them. And then plus, you know, they do that thing where like once you're in their program, you're in their program for life. So that that's all your next follow up checkups That's everything. And they do all this work in vaccines and they do all this work in innovative treatments. They have a super collider hmm. in the basement to treat brain tumors because yep. the old way they treated brain tumors did a bunch of damage to the surrounding tissue. And this one can target the tumor and leave the rest of the brain tissue intact, which is a huge deal. It's huge, huge deal. Best use of a super collider I ever heard of. So love them and you help them do that. So thank you. And that was um, a giant gift from the universe, I feel to the powers that are good. I don't know. You gotta, if you have good in your life, you gotta pay good forward. And I so appreciate, you guys are amazing. You guys were amazing. And it was unexpected. So that was a perfect birthday. I don't know why. <laughs> it feels really weird to tell y'all about my birthday, but that's what I did. No, oh, that's awesome. Everyone was really eager to hear that. I don't know that anybody would be eager to do that, but I do see nope. Sally says that 10 years after move, I finally got 99% of the things out of boxes. Yeah, that's me too. That's me too. Me too. It just takes a minute. I find boxes like in weird places later. <laughs> and then I bag them and I'm like, oh, I bought that twice because it was in here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Joy was asked, may I post World Watercolor Month work on TAS Original? Um, you can, uh, on the TAS, if you're doing original watercolors for World Watercolor Month, you can do those on Friday as long as you're doing tutorials with me and you're sharing those on a fairly regular basis. That will qualify for a Fine Art Friday. You know, um, if you're going to be doing somebody else's tutorial on watercolor, it would go in the tutorial Tuesday post in the comments. But you don't, you just go post that there. You don't have to prove it. It's, it's a pinned post that you just go, this is what I did. And, and you don't have to run that bias. But for the um, originals, just on Friday, hashtag Fine Art Friday, if you remember to think of it. And I, I know Joy joy paints with us all the time so yeah you can totally do fine art fridays um with that and if you don't want to wait for friday again we're not checking whacking wednesday or showcase sunday or tutorial tuesday so 
You can find one of those three posts on our announcements. You can put um, that stuff in anytime. And that's also cool. If that helps. Mm-hmm. If that helps. I think that okay. helps. Oh, my goodness. You guys are amazing. This was so much fun. I like this. <sighs> well, we're going to be back in two, in two days. Mm-hmm. So check the next uh, uh, Live Watercolor. And tomorrow, we're painting a very fluffy white dog whose little nose is up in, uh, what kind of flowers are those? They're like a tulip or pansy or, I don't know what that flower is. Come tell me what that flower is because I don't know what the flower is. That's on the Art Sherpa official channel and I will probably stream it on Facebook as well. Hmm. You guys who like to Facebook only have that option. <laughs> are we good? I think so. Okay. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I'm going to see you at a Nizzle really soon. Bye-bye.